All right, Shalom. This is Ahara One by Yasha Allah of the Lions Den Camp. I want to say Ka Halayim, La Yahawa, Ba Hashem Yahawashai, Ba Hashem Harakakwadash, Mahamath. Double honor to the elder apostles of JMS and the elders. And Shalom to you, Akim and Akwatim and children that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. Just want to go over something that's on my spirit real quick. Um, uh, what's this? Isaiah 33 and 6. And it says, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. All right, and that's, that's a very important scripture to meditate on. Um, knowledge and wisdom is going to be the stability of our times. So what's keeping people stable right now is what? Money, food, shelter, a house, you know, apartments, their relationship, the government, right? All this is keeping this place uh, stable. You know, the this, this system. But the scriptures say that time, what is it talking about? The time of Jacob's trouble. That's what's going to keep um, Israel stable. All right. That's what's going to keep them stable, man. That's what's going to keep us stable in that time. Knowledge and wisdom. You know, the knowledge of the Father's will and, and that, that all all this, um, everything that's happening is his will. That he planned it. And that's going to go, in the, go according to his plans. All right. And to know the prophecies. And, uh, you know, know the way out. Yahweh Now, all right. And also the laws, man. Because in that time, you better not be eating no pork if you need to survive. You better not be eating no shrimp, crab, lobster, shit with blood. And it's just because you're hungry or thirsty, you know, or murdering just to eat. But it says what? And strength and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Of thy times. And strength of salvation. The fear of Yahweh is his treasure. All right. So the fear of Yahweh by Shem is his treasure. All right. That's the treasure. To, to, to have that fear in you means you're aware, you're alert of something. You know, if, if you sit in the, um, if you look at children, they're just unaware of their surroundings, man, until they get told, like, hey, watch out for that person over there. You know, watch out for that ditch. Watch out for those boys. Watch out for those girls. Watch out for this danger here or over there, you know. Um, I, you know, a child is made unaware of these things until they're taught. All right. Until they're woken up to it, made alert. Now, let me get Matthews 4 and 4 real quick. Matthews 4 and 4. Um, Matthews 4 and 4. And, uh, but he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but, every, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Yahweh. You know, so... In that day, man shall not live by bread alone, even today. But every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Father, man. You know, especially in that day when um, when he starts to reveal himself. And he starts to look out and pre protect and take care of the children of Israel. And the little bit of um, uh, 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 benefits and food that we get, or I'll say rations that we get in America today, that's all because of the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. The scriptures say we're going to go to Esau for the want of all things. You know, and that's commissioned by Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. The powers that be. The Most High set them in place. So the scriptures say in that day, when he get when he begins to take us by the hand, as he's doing right now, you know, he manifests himself. He said, what? I shall, matter of fact, I'm going to get that. All right, this is Isaiah 65 and 12. It says, therefore, will I number you to the sword and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter because when I called, you did not answer. All right. And the Lord is calling right now through his prophets. All right. He's, he's calling unto his people, calling unto the sheep and the ones that don't answer. They're set up for the destruction. They're going to still be blind, deaf, dumb and blind in that in that time. All right. And the dangers and the destruction are going to creep up on them. And they're not going to be stable in that time. The Lord's not going to allow them to be stable. He's not going to protect them in that day. All right? They're going to fall in every sense of the word, mentally and physically. 
Um, therefore, will I number you to the sword? Is the Lord going to count you in that number of the ones that set up to be destroyed if you don't turn to him now? You don't call on his name and repent. All right. So he'll number you, meaning count you in that number of the wicked. Instead of counting you in the number of the 144,000 and the one third. And ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear. But did evil before mine eyes. And did choose that there wherein I delighted not. Therefore, thus saith Yahweh Power. Behold, my servants shall eat. But ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink. But ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice. But ye shall be ashamed. All right. Because in that day when Yahweh Shai, uh, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai begins to be revealed, um, we're going to rejoice. And especially when we see the prophecies, prophecies coming to pass. Scripture said destruction and, and family. We, we're going to laugh. I'm going to get that scripture too. You know, we're going to laugh at it. We're going to rejoice. And, but the rest of the world, they're going to mourn and be confounded. They're going to be, what the hell going on? The scriptures were true. You know, and they're st they still not going to know what's going on. They're going to be ashamed. It says, behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of spirit. Whew. So the spirit going to be vexed. All right, this is Job 5 and 22. At destruction, oh, actually, that's yeah, like it. Um, I'm going to start from um, uh, 19, Job 5 and 19. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. All right, and the six troubles up to the, that's where we're at now. All right, by six troubles, that's the missiles. So he's going to deliver us in the six trump, six trouble. Uh, yea, in seven, there shall no evil touch thee. So by the time the seventh hit, the missiles hit, that's it. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death. So when the famine hits, when the food hits, uh, the lowest point where there's no food on the shelves or coming in on the ships or that you can't afford it or pay for it, you know, unless you get the chip or, some, or something like that, the Lord said he gonna, he's going to what? Um... In, in famine, he shall redeem thee from death, from death, you know, and in war from the power of the sword, man. So he's going to protect you and give you spiritual ability, put it, angels in charge of you, according to Psalms 91, if you're a believer. All right. That's the reward of the, the righteous. All right. Let me get, all right. And this is uh, the word redeem. It says pada, pada. It means to what? Deliver, to rescue. So he's going to rescue us from the famine, you know, to preserve us from the famine. It's crazy, man. That says, um, thou shalt be hid from the, sw the scourge of the tongue. People talking shit, people lying on you, you know, neither shalt thou be afraid of the destruction when it cometh at destruction and famine. Thou shalt laugh. All right. Destruction. You know, that word destruction is a uh, shod, uh, shod. It would be a uh, violence at violence, the violence of Esau, the, all the weapons and these, these nations and two thirds of our people at havoc, destruction, devastation, ruin. The, when the destruction of America, violence, havoc, social sin, ruin, devastation. So when the destruction comes to America, the scriptures say the, the hopeful elect are going to laugh. All right. Uh, even being in the midst of it. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beast of the earth, you know, for thou shalt be at league with the stones of the field and the beast of the field field shall be at peace with thee. You know, so you're going to be able to control and manipulate the elements. All right. And the animals going to come right to you, you know, and that's when the Lord going to give you that uh, gift of spiritual uh, powers that that uh, Noah had, or even um, Adam. All right, to deal with the animals. So he's gonna give that back to us, man. 
and thou shalt know that thy tabernacle shall be in peace, right? When you go home to check on, like say friends, you in your house and there's a civil war breaking out, there's a famine and you got to make a choice to leave your house or leave your children or whatever. And you go back to check on your home, it's going, the Lord said he's going to protect it and keep it safe. Or wherever you reside in that, you might be staying in a shack or moving around, you know? Wherever you go, it's going to be safe. The Lord said he's going to protect you and keep you safe if you have the hopeful elect. Um, and thou shalt visit thy habitation and shall not sin. And right there it's talking about. All right. And it says, uh, kata, kata, ta'a, which means to miss, to sin, to forfeit, to lack. So thou shalt not lack, you know. It's just crazy, man. Thou shalt not bear loss. You're going to come home and everything going to be there. So you're not going to lose anything. All right. And it says, uh, it says, uh, or peace is thy tabernacle, meaning you're going to have peace in your home. All right. So I'm going to end it there, man. So that's just uh, something that was on my spirit. And the Lord saying, man, that those are the signs to look for in that time that he's going to feed you when the dollar collapse or whenever there's a famine. And that um, at some point he's going to put the animals and the stones of the field going to be at league with thee. You know, you're going to be able to control shit. And the Lord said he's going to protect you and give you um, protection from the holy angels. So that's what you're supposed to meditate on, man. Matthew 4 and 4. Man shall not live off bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Father, man. So he can give the command and take care of you. And uh, as he takes care of the, the birds of the field. All right. It says, um, I'm going to start from 25. This is Matthew 6 and 25. Therefore, I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. All right, mainly talking about in the times of destruction. You wake up in the morning, of course, you're going to think about what you're going to eat, and, you know, your daily bread and your exercise and your study, you know, your health. But it's talking about in the time of destruction, the time of, 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 of downfall of a society, you know, uh, don't sell out, man, don't give in to sin and don't get weak all right have faith it says uh what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink nor yet for your body right when they take away the food stamps and take away the rations it says what ye shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment right man the lord saying you more important than anything that's on this earth all right so he's saying he'll, he'll protect you. And just because um, you're not able to get to the resources, don't that doesn't mean that they're, uh, they're not there. It's just Esau is going to, um, there's going to be so much destruction everywhere. The Lord going to have to bring food to you or guide you to it, man. All right? like Just like he did Elijah, he brought ravens, had ravens bring him food. You know? It says, um, behold, the fowls of the air, or like he did with, uh, who was that? Uh, I think it was Habakkuk that he took to uh, Daniel in the, in the lion's den, in the den. And he fed him, he gave him the food. All right, so that's what we're dealing with, man. The Lord, like, I got you, I'm going to protect you. That ain't nothing. That's nothing. All right. Um, verse 26, behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow... Not, neither do they reap. Yeah, because everything's already set up for them, man. They got the whole process. You know, what they call the circle of life with the uh, the animals, the insects, the birds. The insects are already there. The birds are there. The flowers are there. Everything's set up. Just like us. You know, once the Lord removes Esau out the way, he's going to put something else in place to take care of us. It's going to be more abundant. It's going to be your house shot. All right? Because the Lord put Esau in place. But truly, it's Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, re, re, um, who we receive our benefits from, our blessings. All right. <clears throat> but right now, Esau has the system. They got the, f they're they're guarding the food and all that shit, man. Hoarding the food and the resources. 
But really everything belongs to Yahweh Bashimel Shai. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Right, man, everything is on earth for us to enjoy and eat and, you know, and experience. But Esau gathers it and puts it into their grocery stores. And just because we you can't get in there, just because you can't get in their pantries or their food, you think there's no food out here for you? The Lord like, man, that's nothing to be able to feed you. Um. Yet, your, verse 26, Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And we're going to be able to do that someday. All right. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field. You know, every dollar that you're chasing, every food, bit of food that you're chasing or eating, the Lord uh, uh, supplies you with that. Period, man. <laughs> um, it says, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if Yahweh so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or withal, wherewithal shall we be clothed? You know? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, and the heathens, that's what mind state, mind state they're going to be in. What you call um, bunkers and shit, doomsday preppers, you know? That's the, that's the spirit that the, uh, the heathens are in. And two-thirds of our people are following after that. But the Lord said, what? For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of Yahweh and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore, take, take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for, for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof, meaning every um, challenge that rises up against you throughout your day, or any day, the Lord will bless you with enough anointing to overcome it. You know, if you're a child of Yahweh by Shemiah Shah. All right, I'm ending with this. Second Ezra is 9 and 7. And everyone that shall be saved. Oh, I'm going to start from 6. Even so, the times of times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonder and powerful works and endings and effects and signs. Man, it's going to be miracles. And, and special effects, you know, and signs, man, spiritual signs in the sun and the moon and stars and upon the earth and in the people. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works, meaning preserved or redeemed, right? And by faith, whereby ye shall, ye have believed, man, shall be preserved from the said perils. And shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. So the Lord uh, uh, anointed you from the beginning to make it through this. And that's what you got to have faith in. And, and, and the fact that you fear him, that you fear you have about I was shy and you believe that's a token of a treasure, man, a gift. You know, to be aware and be alert of our Heavenly Father. Um, cause where there's fear, uh, there's mercy. All right. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. So they're going to be left in the torments. Two thirds of our people in these heathens for such in their life have received benefits and have not known me. All right. So the Lord is taking care of you right now. But uh, if you don't know the Lord, you, wouldn't know, you, you won't understand that. All right, I'm going to just read this one precept. Isaiah 41 and 14. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, 
and ye men of Israel, I will help thee, saith Yahweh, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make thee a sharp threshing instrument having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small, and shalt make the hills as chaff. Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord Yahweh, and shalt glory in the Holy One of Israel, Yahweh Shah.